Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GRE Official Study Guide, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number eight. Lesson number eight out of the third edition, hence 3008. Three stands for the third edition, day eight. And we are on page number 156. Page 156, turn to it, and we'll begin with problem number, problem number four. In problem number four, we are asked to compare x versus y, column A we are told is, is quantity x, column B we are told is quantity y, and what we are told is that x plus y has to equal negative 1. x plus y has to equal negative 1. Well, what can we do here? The simplest, the quickest, the most economical way here is to just plug in numbers, just make up numbers. Make up numbers so that the sum is negative 1. How about 3 plus a negative 4? 3 plus a negative 4 is negative 1, in which case this is 3 and this is negative 4. In this scenario, the answer is A. How about, does that answer? When you pick answer, if you stop right here and we pick answer choice A, if you were to stop right here and pick answer choice A, what you will end up claiming is that, that the quantity in column A is always, always, always greater. Our job is to make sure that that is the case. That is not the case here. Why? Because there are no restrictions on X and Y. They do not tell you anything at all about x and y. So instead of 3 plus 3 plus negative 4, why not negative 4 plus 3? Negative 4 plus 3 is also negative 1. In which case x would be negative 4 and y would be 3. Now the answer is B. Since we have conflicting answer, the correct answer here is D. The correct answer is D. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Number five. On the same page, we are told that R, S, and T are three consecutive R integers. Three consecutive R, integer, R integers. R, S, and T are consecutive. They have to be consecutive. They have to be R, and they have to be whole numbers. Three consecutive R integers. So we're just going to plug them, plug it in three consecutive R integers. Three, five, and seven. There we go. Column A, we are asked to compare x and y. Column B, we are asked to compare x plus y. Column C, we are asked to compare x plus t minus 1. The first thing we notice before you, before you waste your time doing unnecessary work, first thing we notice is that s appears S appears in both columns. S appears in both columns. Let's subtract, let's subtract S from both columns. It's gone. S is gone. Now we have to do R plus 1 versus, versus T plus. T minus 1 rather. R is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. And T is 7 minus 1 is going to be 6. The answer is B. Answer is B. Answer is B. And answer will always remain B. We don't have to worry about here whether or not it's going to change. Why? Because because of the fact they are consecutive odd integers. Listen carefully. Because they are consecutive odd integers, therefore T will always be 4 more than R. Because when we go from R to S, it goes up by 2. And when we go from R to R, S to T, it goes up by another 2. So the difference between R and T is 7. The difference between, uh, difference between R and T is 7. But then you add one to it. Now the difference is only 3, and then you subtract 1 from t, now the difference is 2, which is exactly what we see here. This is exactly what we see here. Or if you like, on the way you could have looked at it is this. Look, on the way you could have looked at it is this. We have r plus 1 here, and we have t minus 1 here. Yes? Let's, let's add 1 to both sides. The t1, negative 1, they can get to cancel. Now we're comparing t versus r plus 2. t versus r plus 2. But even if you add 2 to r, if you add 2 to if you add 2 to r, it only becomes equal to s. 
this quantity only becomes equal to s because they're consecutive odd integers. Because they're consecutive and they have to be odd, the difference between r and s is 2. So now these two quantities are equal, but we're not comparing r plus 2 versus s, we're comparing r plus 2 versus t, and therefore it is always going to be 2 more. This quantity is always going to be 2 more than this quantity, which is exactly what we found. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number, number 6. Number 6. In number 6, on the next page, on page 157, page 157, we are given a picture here. I'm going to try to do my best to give you the way it is. Here is, oh shit, I, oh, so you didn't hear that. It doesn't go through the origin. I didn't mean to do it that way. The one is like this. And the other one is like that. And this is K, this is K, and this is L. And they want us to compare. So to compare the slope of K versus the slope of L. What is slope? We know, we know the slope if somebody asks you, if somebody were to come up to you and ask you, what does slope measure? What does slope measure? What would you say? Well, we would say the slope measures, measures steepness. Slope measures steepness. And we can clearly see that line K, we can clearly see, anybody can clearly see that line K, line K is steeper. Let's see if we're done. Since line k is steeper, the slope of line k is going to be more than slope of L. There is nothing to it. There is no calculation here. There is no calculation here. A lot of the time people end up picking, putting d for the answer here because they see no numbers here and they say to themselves, how can I possibly ascertain uh, the, the slope of the two lines without the numbers? You don't need the numbers. Just look at the picture. You can clearly see that line k is steeper. The steeper the line, the greater the slope. That's all. Let's move on. We are on next problem. Problem number seven. Problem number seven is another silly one. Problem number seven is another silly one. They are all too simple. Because we haven't gotten into medium and the hard one yet. Hard ones yet. Problem number seven. We are given a triangle. And we are told that this is x degrees, this is y degrees, this is z degrees. And the, picture, and the question is, what is the value of x plus y plus z over 45 for crying out loud? We know x plus y in, in any triangle. doesn't matter what the shape of the triangle is. We all know that some of the angles in any triangle is 180. So x plus y plus z is 180. 180 over 45. Of course, 180 over 45 is 4. How do we know that? Because half of 180 is 90. And half of 90 is 45. So 45 times 4 is 180. This is too silly. Let's go to the next one. In the next one, question number 8, we have two types of pen. Two types of pens. Let's call them A and B. We are told that A sells for dollars each. We are told that B sells for three dollars each. And we are told that we can spend up to twenty five dollars. What's the maximum what's the maximum number of pens that we can buy? Again this is a silly question. It's a silly question I'm, I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to change the marker. It's a silly question because of the fact that they say up to $25. Well, if, you, if it's up to $12, $25, you can just buy 12 for the cheap one, and that's it. That's the most you can buy. 12 times 2, 12 times 2, you can buy 12 of the cheap ones, and you can spend $24, and you're going to have a dollar left over. Let's make this question a little bit interesting, shall we? Let's make it interesting. Let's change the question. Instead of saying up to, 
let's change it to you must spend all of twenty five dollars. You must spend all of twenty dollars, not up to, but must spend all of the twenty five dollars. In which case, what is in other words, you can't have leftover money. What is the maximum number of pens can you buy that you can buy now? Think about it for a second. What's the maximum? This is how the problem appeared in the original GRE when the problem appeared. I don't know why they changed it to babyish version. What's, how many pens? What's the most? What's the highest number of pens can you buy now if you are told that you must spend all of the $25? You cannot buy 12 of the cheap, one, cheap ones for $2 each and have a dollar left over. What do we do here? Well, no big deal. It's no big deal. We have to spend, you have to spend the entire $25. Let's buy 11 of the cheap ones, 11 of the cheap ones, so we're going to spend up spending, if we buy 11 of the cheap ones, each cheap one costs $2 each, so 11 of, the, 11 of the cheap ones will cost us $22, and we'll have $3 left over, and with the $3 left over, we'll buy one expensive one, which is $3 each, and the answer now is 12, answer is the most number of pens that we can buy, even if you were to spend it, if, even if we were told that you have to spend the entire amount, it's still 12. It's still 12 to 12. Let's go to the next page then. On the next page, problem number 9. On problem number 9, we are told that y equals 3x, z equals 2y and the question is what's the value of x plus y plus z in terms of x in terms of x we must express everything in terms of x so let's do that x is just x it's going to come down y we know is 3x and z we know is 2y but that won't do the job because we have to express everything in terms of x so let's substitute one more time let's substitute one more time the value of y which we know is 3x so we have x plus 3x plus 2 times y, which is 3x, and we end up with x plus 3x plus 6x for a grand total of 10x. I, I, I shouldn't have to do this all this baby step, but that's what it is. Is 10x. Let's go to the next one, number 10. In number 10 we are told that we are going to pay 75, 75 cents, not dollars, 75 cents if 75 cents for insurance if the value if the value of the article that we are insuring, the value of the article that we are mailing is less than or equal to 25 dollars. If it is worth more than $25, then we have to pay a dollar. Dollar for insurance. If the value of the article is more than $25. We are sold that we are going to send three packages. One package is worth $18.25. Another package is worth $25. Another package we are told is worth $127. The question simply is, what are we going to end up spending on insurance? This is very, it's a very silly question. It's a very simple question. This is eighteen dollars and twenty-five cents. The value is less than twenty-five. We're going to have to pay seventy-five cents on that one. This is exactly twenty-five dollars, and we are told that it is less than or equal to. Since we are told that for well, the value is less than or equal to twenty-five dollars, it is still seventy-five cents. And finally, anything that is worth more than twenty-five dollars is one dollar. This is two dollars and fifty cents. We're going to end up two dollars and fifty cents. Let's do number eleven. Let's do question number eleven. In question number eleven, we are told that 55% of the purchases were made online. 
55% of the purchases of a certain item were made online and 45% of the purchases were made in store were made in store the traditional way where people walk in the store and buy the thing very, very simple question question is what's the ratio of online purchases online to in store well, we know online was 55% Offline, in-store was 45%, so that's your ratio. That's the ratio. We just have to reduce it. We just have to reduce it, and we can clearly see that they're both divisible by 5. So let's divide by 5, top and bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 has 1, 5, 5 has 1, 5, and 45 has 9, 5. So it's just it, 11, 11 to 9. The ratio is 11 to 9. For every 11 purchases that were made online, nine were made offline. I think I'm going to stop right here. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Yes? All right. Bye.